Hey everybody, it is Doug. I'm gonna do a state of my watch collection right now. And uh, on top of everything else, my girlfriend and I just came back from a really cool trip in Europe. So I was gonna lace some of the uh, footage that we had from there just to make the uh, video a little bit more interesting. And then lastly, what I'm gonna to do towards the very end, I'm going to rank all of them in order of my favorite to my, and I can't say least favorite because I like them all, but to the one that I don't like as much as the others. Bye. Hey everybody. So, state of the collection, watch number one is the Rolex Daytona. So for most watch nuts, and especially Rolex uh, fanboys and fangirls, the Daytona is one of the most special ones, and uh, this is one of the most special watches in my opinion. So what is it that makes the Daytona so special? Well, one thing is it's a chronograph. And just by nature of the dial, chronographs are hot. Yeah, chronographs are sexy. The subdials just make it look so cool. Mm. Yeah, the extra pushers and everything. And of course on this, this particular home, or this particular watch, that ceramic bezel, and it blends in just so beautifully with that gloss black dial. Uh, those crowns, I think, look phenomenal. Uh, I love those crowns on the Rolex Daytona. I love how they all have the little screw-in things. I, I know a lot of people don't like that, but you know, they're like, oh, I have to unscrew it to use it. I never ever use the chronograph function on this other than just to watch it go, you know, just personally my, myself. So I'm not timing anything with this. So for me, it's just the beauty of it. it. It truly, it's the aesthetics of the Daytona that are just so spectacular. I haven't seen too many loom shots of the Daytona online. So here it is. A lot of times people wonder, is the Daytona too small? And here is a Daytona on my wrist, which is actually a little bit larger than, than normal. My wrist is 7.25 inches or 184 uh, millimeters. So as I said, here it is from your viewing angle as you wear it. And here it is at more of a distance. Come in a little bit closer. Oh yeah. Hey everybody, the next watch in my collection is the Tag Boyer Monaco. Let's talk about the Tag Heuer Monaco. So it all started with the Monaco. And what in the world does that mean? Well, this was the very first watch I bought from my AD, who happens to carry both Rolex and Tag Heuer. This watch I bought in March of 2019, and this was my first purchase. This one led to the very next one, which was a Rolex Datejust 41 with a blue dial in Jubilee. And then it, led, then it led to the Batman, then it led to the Daytona, then it led to the Starbucks. Like I said, those other ones would not have been possible if I didn't buy this watch first from the AD. This is a quartz, so if you look at the ticking, you'll see it's ticking and not sweeping. Uh, which I'm fine with uh, with this watch because it's a small second hand so you really don't see it and this is one that I don't really use all that often so I can just pick up and go with it. One thing that Tag Heuer absolutely nailed is the size of the Monaco. 
This is a 37 millimeter, which I think is the perfect size for a square watch. It just, it's not too big, not too small. It is just spot on. inspired brown. The next watch in my collection is the Rolex Batman. So where should I begin with the Batman? Well, I guess the very first thing is the name. Some people call it the Batgirl, some people call it the Batman. I call it a Batman on Jubilee. Uh, I don't really understand why people have different names for the same watch. Uh, a Pepsi, for example, with the red and blue is a Pepsi, whether it has Jubilee, Oyster, Rubber Bee, NATO strap, or anything, and that's the way I feel about any watch. One of the reasons why I have a sentimental attachment to this watch is that it was offered to me just a few days after my dad had died and since these were so difficult to get, it, to me, it seemed like it was the watch that my dad gave to me. One thing that is just of supreme comfort is the Jubilee bracelet. It, it's totally unlike any of my other bracelets. I know it's a fancy bracelet, but man, does this thing articulate around your wrist. It is so comfortable, by far my most comfortable watch. This is a little bit more dressy, but that's the way I like it because as Rolex puts it, this is the Cosmopolitan watch. The next watch in my collection is as strong as the Coliseum itself. It's a Mariner by Rolex, Starbucks edition. came out I really wanted the, uh, the Hulk and this thing in pictures didn't look as appealing to me but every time I put this thing on I absolutely love it. One question a lot of people may have about a green watch is is it really usable because it's like does it clash with everything that you wear and to be quite honest the green that's on this is almost more of a it has like a bluish tint to it and uh, here I am wearing it with a blue shirt it usually looks fantastic, and I'll tell you, this thing looks absolutely amazing when you wear a white shirt. But, uh, but yeah, totally view or totally usable. Uh, I think it looks fantastic in almost every situation with clothes. Things that can't be beat with the Submariner. This would be any of them, not just the green dial, of course, or green bezel. But is the clasp. Um, that adjustable fit is just fantastic. But just the sheen of this brushed stainless is just perfect. It has like a glow to it. Um, I've heard before that Rolex does stainless steel the way other companies do precious metals, and it almost does seem like a precious metal. Next up are my G-Shocks. So let's see what we got. On this side, it's the GA2100, then the GM2100 in the center, and then the GM5600. I've always been a huge fan of G-Shocks, and I always have to have one in my collection. And these are, right now, my current three. And I tend to go through G-Shocks pretty regularly, I would say, usually one in or one out a year. But uh, of these three, my favorite is actually the GM 5600. Uh, I just like it. It's so legible. I love the light. I love the classic uh, square look. Then my next favorite, which actually I think is most aesthetically pleasing, is the GM 2100. The silver is absolutely stunning. Uh, but functionality-wise, and just in terms of wearability, I like the, the GM a little bit, or the GM 5600 a little bit more. 
And uh, this one is uh, the GA2100 is very nice, but once you get these metal ones on and just the higher quality uh, straps that they have and just the weight, it makes these uh, total resin and plastic ones seem a little bit you know, flimsy, even though it really is a very, very nice watch. in my collection is the Grand Seiko Sea of Clouds. So here's the falls in Greenville, South Carolina. And here's my Sea of Clouds Grand Seiko. Uh, I've had this for about seven and a half months. And uh, it's, it's July now. I set this to the atomic clock on January 1st. And so here we are at seven plus months since then, and it is losing 0 0.0049 seconds a day. But let's spotlight that. This thing is a quartz. And uh, that's why, of course, that accuracy is just so dead on. But as far as a quartz is concerned, when was the last time you saw a quartz movement that looks like that? Absolutely stunning. Another dynamic thing about this watch is the dial. Not only does it have the Sea of Clouds etching on it, but uh, in darker lights or shadowed light, it has a light blue hue. But as soon as you go out into the sunlight, it turns uh, to a very white or silvery type of look. Like I said, very, very dynamic. I am in Florence, Italy, and the next watch in my collection is the Cartier Santos. Grand Bahamian Hotel in Greenville, South Carolina. A very classy place for probably my classiest watch. Uh, it's the Cartier Santos, and this is the medium version. And, uh, and I specifically chose the medium for several reasons. One, I like the classic size and proportions of it. Uh, I think it's the appropriate size, even though I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist. Uh, but in addition to that, my girlfriend and I are actually both sharing this watch. So it's one that uh, I can easily change the links so that she can wear it and she looks fantastic in it. And, uh, but I love it. And I love also that it is a no date. This is here. It's just adding a little bit more class, a little bit more dressy. And also it has an integrated bracelet, which I've never had before. We're now leaving the Swatch store with our noon swatches. <sighs> so my moon swatch, Earth, mission on Earth. Uh, as you can tell from this video, I've changed out the standard uh, strap, which I actually like. But I had an Omega NATO, and if you guys know, these things are crazy expensive. The NATO was like $180 after taxes and everything. But it just so happens it matches my moon swatch really nicely with the blue and the white. So I think I'm gonna keep it on this for a while. But uh, like I said, this started off as a fun vacation watch. Uh, my girlfriend and I were in Cannes, France, and there was a swatch store there, so we bought two of them. She had got Pluto and I have Earth, uh, but we just, we wore them the whole trip, and it was just a ton of fun. They're crazy light. They're you know easy going, fun watches, and uh, and I've really enjoyed this thing. So 
I really do like my moon swatch. Okay, now it's time for me to rank my watches. Even though I love them all, my number one choice is gonna be my Black Daytona. Maybe very, very predictable. Uh, and you might think, well, it's just because of the hype of the Daytona, but it's not. Um, when you have the watch, it is absolutely phenomenal. And the black one in particular, it has the wearability of a black sub, but it has the specialness of a Daytona. So it really is quite special in that respect. Number two is the Batman. Number three is the Starbucks. And number four is the Santos. Number five is the Sea of Clouds. And number six is the Monaco. Number seven is the GM 5600. And number eight is the Moonswatch Mission on Earth. Number nine is the GM 2100. And this might be a little bit surprising, especially to the Cassia guys. Uh, I love and adore this watch, but it's just because of legibility issues. And then heading up the last one at number 10 is the GA2100. Yoke. Thank you guys so much for um, enduring this long video. I know it's probably the longest one I've ever made, uh, but there were a bunch of watches and I just wanted to kind of uh, show everything to, the, to all of you. And, uh, and also I would totally love to know how you would rate my watches. And not that you have to rate them all, because I know there's a whole bunch of watches that you may not even be interested in or care about. But maybe if you, in your comments section, if you gave me like your top three, I'd just love to know what that is. Thank you. Bye-bye.